Hello everyone, my name is Elite Trainer Kenway and I have a question. Where do you think Kubfu was before it came to Galar? Today I'm here to discuss the reasons I believe Kubfu originated in Alola and I want to share with you the connection I believe it has with Mars Shadow. So let's talk about it. Before we can draw Kubfu's connection to Mars Shadow, we first need to provide evidence that Kubfu is from Alola. So what do we know about Kubfu? Kupfu was brought to the Isle of Armor by Mustard some time ago, and we know that Kupfu are known to live in the mountains far away from the Galar region. A popular theory amongst fans was that Kupfu originated in the Sinnoh region atop Mount Coronet. However, thanks to our adventure through ancient history, we know that's simply not the case. According to the official strategy guide for Pokemon Sun and Moon, there are four mountain ranges in Alola. The one we're interested in today is Ten Carat Hill, the mountain that sits atop Mele Mele Island. But what's so special about Ten Carat Hill? Ten Carat Hill is a mountain where low-level Pokemon like Rockruff, Machop, Diglett, and Jangmo call home. A low-level fighting type Pokemon like Kubfu would absolutely fit in in this environment. But if Kubfu used to live on Ten Carat Hill, then what would have driven it away? And how does that tie into Mustard? Well, I'm glad you asked. If you remember the Pokemon Sun and Moon demo, you'll remember that most people sped their way through it to get Ash Greninja at the end. But if you slow down and take your time, you may notice a few key pieces of information. Such as, when you battle Team Skull Admin's Plumeria in the demo, she has a level 36 goal back. However, when you meet her roughly a month later in the actual game, she suddenly has a level 25 Golbat instead. And we know that these are two separate Pokemon for reasons I'm about to get into. We know that these events happen in a specific order because when you go to the Pokemon Center coffee shop in the demo, you're greeted with a female employee who tells you, quote, I'm just looking after the place. The owner of the cafe area is on a trip around the world in search of the finest ingredients. I think he should be back in about a month. And the owner does in fact return when the games were released exactly 24 days after the demo released. So this was 100% an intentional choice by the developers to show the events of the demo took place a month before the games. Plumeria's Golbat in the demo only has one move, Air Cutter. Air Cutter is a 60 base power move that has a higher chance to land a critical hit, and when it does, it has 90 base power. The cup food that I received from Mustard on the Olive Armor is level 10 and only has an HP of 32. We can assume that because the levels of the other Pokemon in the area, that cup food in this area would likely be around level 10 or maybe 15 at the most. However, even at level 15, it can still be one-shotted by a level 36 Golbat using move Air Cutter. Kupfu being a pure fighting type also makes it receive two times damage from a move like Air Cutter. But why is any of this important? Because it tells a story. About a month before the events of Sun and Moon, Plumeria was on 10 Carat Hill training her level 36 Golbat amongst the fighting type Pokemon on the mountain. When she came across Kupfu, keep in mind that some of the Hakamo's on 10 Carat Hill are between levels 26 and 30, but that most of the Pokemon in the area are below level 20. Seeing a bear-like Pokemon similar to Stuffle, Plumeria engages it in battle. Engaging in just another routine training battle, Plumeria commands her Golbat to use the move Air Cutter. Unfortunately for everyone involved, Golbat's Air Cutter landed a critical hit on Kupfu, and thanks to Kupfu's fighting type being weak to flying, the move simply dealt too much damage and Kupfu died as a result. And now, before you throw up your objections, I want to remind you that in the anime, the manga, and even the games have showed Pokemon dying in the past. Anyway, back to our story. Plumeria, afraid that because she's a member of Team Skull, no one would believe that it was an accident, simply left the scene and thus exited the first half of our story. As far as her Golbat goes, she's probably too afraid to use it again, so it's either sitting in a Pokeball somewhere or she very likely released it. Now, this is where Mustard and Honey come into our story, but first, I want to mention a few things before we can continue. When you battle Mustard at the end of the Isle of Armor DLC, his team consists of Mineshow, Luxray, Lycanroc, Corviknight, Komo, and Urshifu. Over half of Mustard's team can be found in the wilds of Alola, and two of those Pokemon can be found on Tan Carrot Hill. We know that Mustard traveled the world after retiring from his role as champion, so it's no big leap to assume that he came to Alola to catch some new Pokemon. In regards to his partner, Honey, we don't really know much about her. But the only things we do know about Honey is that she came from a powerful tech company outside of Galar, and we know that she deeply cares for the well-being of Pokemon. Now, most fans think that Honey came from the Sylphco in Kanto, but we've been to Kanto and we see that there's no references to Honey anywhere in or around the Sylph company. As a matter of fact, the games that were released just before Sword and Shield were the Kanto games, and that would have been a perfect opportunity to hide an Easter egg somewhere about Honey. But nope, no references to Honey anywhere in the Kanto region. Looking at Honey's team for a moment, we notice that she has a Salazzle. While Salazzle can be found in Galar, 
who's to say she didn't bring it with her from Alola? One more thing I want to point your attention towards is the type null you receive in the Battle Tower in Galar. To date, there are only three type nulls known to canonically exist in any given universe. Gladion's type null, Elio slash Selene's type null, and the third mysterious one that shows up in the Battle Tower in Galar with no real explanation. It's my belief that, rather than working for the Sylph Company, Honey actually used to work for the Aether Foundation, and once she learned that the Aether Foundation was creating a Pokemon specifically to battle Ultra Beasts, she nabbed the only type nulls she could get her hands on and fled the Aether Foundation. During her escape, Honey made her way to Melee Melee Island, and it's here that Mustard finally enters our story. When we left our story a moment ago, Plumeria and her Golbat had accidentally killed a Cub Fu and fled the scene. Some short time later, Mustard begins his hike up Ten Carat Hill, looking to train his recently caught Alolan Pokemon, when he sees a small group of Kupu just off in the distance, gathered around in a circle. Mustard then goes up to investigate the scene and sees a dead Kupu laying in the circle. Unsure of what had happened, or even if the danger is still around, Mustard grabs up the remaining Kupu and races back down the mountain to the Pokemon Center. While Mustard is waiting for the Cubfoos to be healed by Nurse Joy, he sees Honey entering the Pokemon Center and begin asking around if anyone has a boat or a plane and can help her leave the island. Mustard, deciding that the mountain probably isn't safe for Cubfu anyway, tells Honey that he was in fact just about to leave Alola and make his way back to his home region in Galar. So, with Type Null and a few Cubfu in tow, Mustard and Honey set sail for the Galar region. Once they arrive in Galar, Honey figures that Type Null probably wouldn't be safe with her if someone from the Aether Foundation ever caught up with them. So, she goes to the Battle Tower and gives Type Null to an employee there and asks them to pass that Type Null off to a strong and kind trainer. And so, that Type Null ends up being given to you. Meanwhile, Mustard figures that these Kupfu need to be kept safe somewhere, so he buys an island just off the east coast of Galar and names it the Isle of Armor, and makes it a safe haven for Kupfus to train, breed, and potentially find homes with experienced yet kind trainers. But that's only part of our story. If you were paying attention at the beginning of this video, you may be wondering why I haven't talked about Mars Shadow this entire time. Well, we have finally reached that part of the video. I believe that the Kupfu that Plumeria accidentally killed ended up becoming Marshadow, the only ghost fighting type mythical Pokemon in existence. In 2017, trainers were gifted a Mount Tenzai Marshadow in a Cherish Ball. That Marshadow was level 50 and knew the moves Spectral Thief, Close Combat, Force Palm, and Shadow Ball. The problem is that Marshadow can't know Close Combat at level 50. Marshadow doesn't learn Close Combat by level up until it reaches level 99. And there aren't any TMs for close combat in any of the Alolan games. Kupfu, however, does learn close combat by level up at level 48. So what if, because Marshadow is a Kupfu, it was able to learn close combat at level 48 despite not normally being able to learn it that early? That's an odd connection for sure, but it's certainly not the only connection these two Pokemon have. Let's take a look at Marshadow's signature move, Sun Stealing 7 Star Strike. Marshadow's signature move features several rapid style strikes followed by a strong style strike. Marshadow's signature move is a nod to the single strike style or the rapid strike style of the combat it would have mastered had it not been for Plumeria and her Golbat. And that's pretty much it. As I said on our year-end anniversary video, I'm going to be remaking a few videos from 2021, and with last week's video having mentioned Marshadow, I feel like this was a good time to bring this theory back. As always, I hope you guys have a fantastic week, and I can't wait to talk to you again soon. Peace.